Hello, and welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience. And we learn about the craft of storyboarding along the way. So this is an improv art stream that runs on audience suggestions, of course. Uh, Mike, what kind of prompts are we looking for from the audience? Well, as in previous collaboratories, what we're looking for are three things. We need uh, a couple characters, we need a setting, and a conflict. So get your thinking caps on. It, the sky's the limit, you know, per se, but although we will have a little bit of veto power over that, you know, I don't want to be drawing like, you know, 20,000 beetles or something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> really, really weird, but not too weird. <laughs> So um, just a couple of characters. We'll keep it simple, keep it light, and keep it fun. Yeah. So what, let's see. What we've had our last episode was Careless Carrie loses his backpack, mm -hmm. and then he looks inside to find a squirrel fighting with an army man over Careless Carrie's lunch. <laughs> army man's defending it with a ruler. And the swashbuckling squirrel was trying to stab him with a uh, modified paperclip. <laughs> okay, it got dark in the end. <laughs> oh no, they were just they were just dueling. They were swashbuckling, you know. Okay. Uh, no one ever got stabbed or anything, so don't worry about that. Besides, okay. what was he gonna do with the paperclip? The army was plastic. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing he could have done. <laughs> so no squirrels were hurt in the storyboard session. No. If the squirrel had been a wrestler, maybe he could have like popped off one of his arms or something like that, but mm -hmm. he wasn't. He was a he was a dashing rogue of a squirrel. <laughs> nice. Since we're waiting, Mike, did you want to mention um, the animation dance party happening very soon? Yes. So for those of you going to Lightbox, um, yeah. Lightbox Expo coming up in Pasadena, and if even if you're not, um, we are doing a thing called Animation Dance Party. It is it's in its third year. And what we do is uh, we are soliciting submissions for dance cycles. So if you have a character, um, an original character that you want to put forward onto our dance floor, you can do a dance cycle of between, uh, of either 24 frames, 48 frames, or 96 frames. And then those um, will go onto a, a 3D set where all of our dancers will dance together. There's some uh, previous ones you can find on YouTube if you just go to um, Wacom Animation Dance Party because we are doing this in conjunction with Wacom Technology, um, MSI Computers, and ArtStation. Um, and then those entries will all be judged for fantastic prizes. This year, um, we're sort of going crazy uh, like we did last year a bit, and MSI is putting up a... Uh, Creator Series 17, so a 17-inch bonkers awesome laptop, um, a Wacom Cintiq 22, and a Toon Boom Harmony and Storyboard Pro one-year license, and a $100 gift card to ArtStation. Nice. The Art Station Marketplace. So get your dance on. You've got a week and a half left. We yes, wouldn't give any more notice, but Collaboratory hasn't been streaming lately. <laughs> yes, and we'll share the link uh, so people can apply um, in the chat. Okay, so we have one suggestion. Um, right. Haunted airplane similar to a haunted house, but in a plane for Halloween. A haunted plane? Yes. Now, how would a haunted plane work? Would it still be flying, kind of like the Black Pearl, only an airplane? I guess, yeah. You know, you know what the Black Pearl is from Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. Like I know some people say Pirates of the Caribbean, but that's not how I said it when I was a kid, so <laughs> I'm going to steal it. Yeah, I guess, similar to that. I was a Disneyland kid growing up. Let's see if we get any other suggestions or something to add to the haunted airplane. Well, it is, how, it is October, so Halloween's right around the corner. It is. You know what? Flying, I think, might be a better, a better way. Like if it's a flying haunted airplane. So we have a we have a setting, flying haunted airplane. So let's let's start starting on that. I think it should be kind of like one of those old school passenger planes, only like 
the kind that still have propellers. Mm -hmm. We also got that the pilot could be a vampire. So this is this is what supplies Hotel Transylvania with its uh, people. <laughs> Do you dress up for Halloween, Mike? I hardly ever have time to find a good costume anymore. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I'm not much of a of a cosplayer, I guess. Maybe I should be. <laughs> Start getting into it. <laughs> Sure. I mean, everybody wants to see a, a dude in his 40s in a costume, right? That's that's a thing. I feel like if you have kids, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we've done, like, uh, family costumes and stuff before. That's always fun. My, my wife really loves to, to do Halloween things. It's one of her favorite holidays. Oh, nice. Okay, so we've got a bit of a, a, a an airplane here, um, and we'll put in some passenger like windows. I feel like we need to do a little bit more definition on this plane. We've got a vampire who's in charge. Who's the who's the captain? Um, what's our conflict? We don't really have a conflict yet. Oh yeah, we need a conflict. So okay. We've got we've got some characters brewing, but we mm -hmm. don't have a conflict yet. Yes, Simon was on a roll. He said so. The pilot could be a vampire, and the flight attendants could be mummies, uh, but we don't have a conflict yet. Well, I would I would err on the side of zombies rather than mummies. I think. Okay. You can get more. You can get more costume out of. Maybe we'll make one one zombie, one mummy. Now we got to figure out how to make this plane look haunted, because now it just looks like a plane. <laughs> yeah. So maybe there's like some stuff sort of streaming off of it. Um, you know, like it's got uh, parts of it that are kind of coming apart or mm -hmm. rusty or like somebody dredged up an old rack in there. Uh, just sort of flying it anyway. It's not flying under any real power of its own. It's just magically enchanted. So that that kind of does it a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a, you know. Something like that. Yeah, that looks much better. Some some wispy stuff coming out, you know. That looks more haunted, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think it should be flying over some sort of cool mountainous region. Um, you know, a, a Transylvania esque type landscape. Um, let's make that more interesting. Is there a reason why you switched brushes or just preference of? Um, I, I, I just made the same brush smaller. Oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna use the auto fill in feature. Nice. Is that going on? Um, and also, you know what I'm, I'm also gonna do is um, add to this particular layer because I think this oh, whoops. that's one of the, the caveats of this uh, auto fill in thing is that um, you kind of have to connect it all in one go otherwise it didn't work very well because you have to close it for it to work So we have one conflict uh, from the audience. So the pilot decides to fall asleep due to an overdose of Halloween candy and the zombies have to take over flying the plane. Well, I, you know, vampires don't really sleep. So that 
I, I, well, I guess the only, the only way that it would happen is if, uh, like the sun came out or something, you know? True. Mm -hmm. Random dragon head here too. We can get rid of that. That was warm up for the stream. Um, okay. Now let's, let's change a couple of layers around here. I'm going to take this and put it on layer uh, D. And then I'm going to take these mountains here. I'm going to put them on C as an overlay underlay. And then on this BG here, I'm going to drop in a tone. So let's go with, I'm going to use this uh, um, rectangle tool here and then fill it in. This is another way to, to do it besides just drawing it with the fill in on. Um, put a, a tone down and then okay. just delete this little square. Um, and then on A, I'm gonna get another uh, group of mountains going on behind. So I can mess with that a little bit too. but in a lighter color. Okay. So we've got something that gives a little bit more atmosphere and then um, maybe some, you know, some wispy looking creepy clouds. Oh, that didn't fill in very well. Some of the time with texture brushes, it's hard to tell like where the actual center line begins and ends. So you just have to hedge your bets and do, do your best to connect them. Looks great already. All right, let's get some more creepy shadows in there, or clouds. So does the audience have any other conflicts that we could use in the story? Well, I like the idea of like inept people having to take over, but I don't necessarily think that it should be because of the guy falling asleep. Maybe it's just dawn is approaching. Okay. You know, vampires, they don't really do well with the sunlight, right? Mm hmm I mean, Julia, you were a vampire once, right? You know what it's like. Yeah, I am very pale, but <laughs> no. Come on, we can't even count on your life experience as a vampire. All right, I see how it is. No. I'm going to uncheck select newly created layer because this might be, oh, never mind, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, so one thing you can do if you're going to apply a layer motion to anything, it's a good, it's a nice little trick, is to put something inside of a group like this and then apply your layer motion to the group not the individual layers. That way everything stays together really nicely. Hmm. Sometimes you have to just get your cutter tool out as well and clear out any extra spots that are filled in and shouldn't be. A little house cleaning and stuff like that. All right, so we're going to add just a little bit of layer motion on these uh, layers here. We're going to click on the little man and make him run, like so. And since this isn't going to be like a 3D sort of um, thing here, we're just going to simulate that with layer motion. Um, and going down here, we have a keyframe that's been made. We're going to push end on our keyboard and do another one. And then we're going to move this like a so. Whoa. Then another thing we're going to do is we're going to take this C layer and move it on top. That way, so you know, and we're going to lengthen that out so it. Uh, doesn't look like he's like speeding like a jet, you know? Mm -hmm. I always love your sound effects, Mike. Thank you. Is that something you do while you're drawing all the time? You just sound effects? 
for everything or no only only when i'm on stream okay. <laughs> and you know there's another thing we can do also now that we've set this up i'm going to cut it right there in the middle now that i've set that that uh particular thing in motion and we're going to put in a lightning bolt so um i'm going to get this here get my brush out and let's get something that has a little bit sharper of an edge. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. Go to my go to my brushes. I deleted some other brushes. Probably shouldn't have deleted earlier. So <laughs> I'm just going to put the minimum size down to about 10%, and turn the maximum size up to about 35. And we'll test that out. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but not totally right. Yeah, let's take that take that down to one percent. That's that's looking a little bit better. Okay. Now I can put that on an empty layer. So I'm gonna pick B right here, this empty layer, and um, I'm going to draw some uh, some lightning coming down. And uh, when you're doing lightning, it's good to study it out, but we don't really have time for that right now. His lightning patterns are so intricate and so cool. Every once in a while around here, I mean, it's not often, it's pretty fairly, fairly rare, but um, we get lightning storms. And that's always really cool to watch from mm -hmm. a distance. Yeah, exactly, from a distance, when you're inside and, and cozy. All right, now I'm doing both of those, and I'm going to chop this up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna zoom in here on the timeline. And so I can tell, if I hold down Alt, I can tell how long these frames are gonna be actually held for. Sometimes we get down to the nitty gritty of, of frame count. So now in here, I can um, go to my B layer. And on the first one here, I can get rid of one of the lightning bolts. And I'm gonna change the tone background to something much darker. Oh, yes. And then um, take these clouds and also make them a little bit darker too to give a nice contrast. Then on this one, I'm going to go to B, delete the lightning, and then um, change some of these other things again. So. Go background, tone, darker, A, that. And if darker. anyone has any questions for Mike um, related to Storyboard Pro, let us know. Or yeah. Animation Dance Party. Or Animation Dance Party, yes. Or so animation in general. <laughs> Please uh, don't be shy. Here's another trick, too, that you can sometimes get a little bit of mileage out of your drawings with. If you flop that and then go whoop, like this, you can sometimes get a little bit more out of things. So that way it doesn't look like the same drawing that you're using. So, you know, but it's still effective. Nice. Chop that up one more time. Because we need we need a little bit of break in, in between here. So that will go back to its normal color, more or less. And then those lightning bolts on B. And copy and paste over here. And the background tone will go dark again. Clouds. Color pick. Go dark like that. If we had time, I'd put lighting in the clouds and all that stuff, but we don't have time for that. So we go. So this, we don't need. We don't need lightning on here. So we can do that. There we go. Um, all right, now uh, let's go. What do you say we go in the cabin, huh? 
We'll go into the cabin of the of the airplane. Oh yes, yes. We have to show the zombies, and yeah, you're right. We have to show. We have to show the captain. Um, and we're gonna set this up as a. Um, I think we should set this up already as a as a pan or something as as like a. Um, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? We're going to have a little quick zoom over. So I'm okay. going to put him, say, we'll do an overlay, put him sort of like as this uh, you know, console right here. There would be another console, and there's all, obviously a bunch of other stuff in, in there. Um, in the background here, underneath it, we'll add a bit of like a, a cabin interior, the cockpit. Never totally understood why they call it a cockpit. I don't think that they would have uh, chickens inside of it. <laughs> but um, you know, maybe give this a, a slight upshot. Maybe that's where the like they used to have their illegal rooster fights. <laughs> Up in the air, maybe. Yeah, they're like, no one's going to track us up here. Let's see the yeah. cops try and bust this one up. <laughs> it's legal in the air. Yeah. Um, so, are, don't we, little... are we having two pilots or just one? Is it just a uh, I think just the one. Just one? So okay. There's no reason for any zombie to take over, right? True. And then there's, like, the jump seat here and then some, like, you know, instrumentation or whatever. You know, that they would have dials and stuff. I mean, this is where research really comes in handy to see like what a modern airplane cockpit would look like. Yeah, this must be really um, hard to draw just by memory. <laughs> yeah, so so it doesn't look like Star Trek or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. So then here would be like the captain's chair and it should and being haunted, I think it should be like a Pan Am, like an old Pan Am from the 60s or something. Mm -hmm. But that's just my personal preference because that sort of 60s style looks super cool. In my opinion. Yeah, I agree. All right. Now we have Captain. Let's see here. Captain, what's a good brush for you? We'll do brush 18. Give him a nice cap. Should he also have his like coffin nearby or? I don't know. Should he? Audience? <laughs> so there is a little bit of a space. We don't want him to look like a, like a, a mariner or anything like that. So we got to put that little rim in there. Give him some epaulets because vampires like, you know, the pomp of it all. <laughs> and then some hands on like an old steering wheel. Give him like a skinny 60s tie. Of course, it would be like bat wings instead of normal wings. Because a uh, vampire, what do you want? All right. <clears throat> so you'd be like, this is your captain speaking. We are about to land. Or something. Something in, the, in that grain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, setting that up. We would maybe he would even have like some sort of intercom type 
type thing that we could start with. Like, uh, like he's talking into some little, little device, you know? They would have with a cord attached. This is your captain speaking. We are only 100 miles from our destination. Blah. I do like that he looks a bit sleepy. And you should look down at, at, at some instruments. It is 6 a.m., it is 4 a.m., and... Okay. I duplicate this one. Then um, go to layer B where he's on. <laughs> And then wide eyes, because he realizes dawn is approaching. So going back to the animation dance party, Mike, um, what made you come up with this idea? Um. I just like the idea of, um, you know, when I was younger, we, we did an animation jam at a, a festival one time, and it was super cool seeing all of these people who had never met each other, who, you know, have different, you know, wildly different styles and stuff all come together into one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and also it uh, provides, like, to me, it provides contests provide an opportunity to advance your craft through the your you know gains in tech. And so we, you know, I like to see people that are you know have have spent that time working on their you know their their art their craft and seeing that they get rewarded for it. You know because. Uh, 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 a year license of Harmony and Storbo Pro, that's nothing to sneeze at. You know, that's, that's a professional tools. No, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, and it's cool. It's a, like, I mean, people, it's, you see like a lot of different, um, um, what's what I'm looking for, um, techniques or, uh, you know, different styles. So it's, it's cool to see that too. From different artists. But yeah, it's 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 very cool. Um, it's it's a labor of love for a lot of people, and um, you know, our, our we have a we have a crew that's working on it right now, and um, they are really really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen some of the I've seen some of the work. It looks really cool. I can't wait to to see it all put together. Let's, let's have some old school looking switches. Um, maybe like a few like older looking buttons. Mm -hmm. uh, another trick, if you've drawn something once, you can copy and paste it and use it again. Oop. Okay, so this will be like some sort of steering column right here for his stuff, maybe another dial or thing we don't need to really worry about. Um, and then I'm going to take this from a different layer, from B, and underneath it, uh, I'm going to put like a uh, symbol for like a moon right here and a symbol for a sun right here. Like, like it's a weird altimeter, only it tells you what time of day it is. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and then we're going to have uh, Homeboy reach down with his hand and like clear some dust off of it. With his clawed hand, big knobby knuckles or something. <laughs> I love that you put all these details. Is it always expected uh, with a storyboard to put um, details like that? Is it expected? Details give, or... details give character. Mm -hmm. And you want character in a board. Always character is so important. So the more of that you can put in there, it's a little, a little panache, a little, um, yeah. you know, yeah. just attitude, expression, um, any kind of any kind of thing that's going to help you sell an idea, you know, something that that makes it more than just ordinary, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brings out that uh, wow factor. Yeah. Okay, and you can relate more to the character. Sometimes you only need to do it on like the first drawing too. It's got a really long pinky. And I'll just delete this. So in this first panel, what we can do is put a, an overlay on this. Um, we'll just take this brush, turn on uh, the fill-in, and have this go like that, just over it. Then here's a little trick we can do, is grab all of that, turn it to a gray, and then drop the opacity down to about like that or so. So it's not as visible. Mm -hmm. then, we'll, then we'll put it underneath the hand layer, right? And have it be like he's wiping a bunch of dust off of this thing, right? So we have to make sure that we have a consistent opacity layer or it's not gonna look, look very good. So that was at 75. And it's best to do that by the numbers, you know? instead of eyeballing it. Then we're going to copy this one and then have him skew the hand over just like this. So it looks like he's wiping it off. Back down to brush 18, trusty brush 18. And then what we can do is on D here, we'll just erase all of this. Turns down the wipes. Then uh, one more and withdraw the hand. And this one you might want to actually just, you know, do a different drawing for. As long as it doesn't compete with what you're trying to show. Now, in this case, we can do a little thing. To... Um, actually kind of draw our attention towards this a little bit and just keep one of those fingers up. Like I said. So we see him draw back his hand, but at the same time he's pointing at this sun, you know. 
Anything you do to, to, to sort of manipulate and draw the eye of your viewer is a good idea. Almost. Unless you're drawing their eye to look at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You want them to look at, you can use little visual devices um, to help them like know where their eye is supposed to look. You know, arrows are a good idea. Converging lines are a good idea. Or a good, or a good method, rather, I should say. So he comes down, wipes that off. And then we can see, we can go like this, grab this and put the... Um, Put a layer motion on it. Then end. Oh, we need to set the, the pivot point first. So set the pivot point right there in the middle. Then we're going to move it like that. We're going to cheat it just a little bit so it looks like it's moving in this proper perspective. All right, now one thing you can do also is to set keyframes intermittently. So I'm gonna set a keyframe here and then I'm gonna take this keyframe, copy it, and then duplicate it right next to it. So it starts, stops, starts. Stops, like, like it's ticking down. So start, stop. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Like it's a ticking clock, you know? Okay. Little tips. Yeah, it's a great one. Differences. Oh, that off. And who's this now, the zombie? This would be the Captain Vampire. Oh, okay, still okay. It's kind of got a little Simpson, Simpson mouth. <laughs> Unintentional. <but laughs> I did work on that show for quite a long time, so. <laughs> it's just in you. <laughs> it's in me now, it's part of me. I've assimilated. <laughs> All right. And one thing we're going to do here is a camera move eventually. Um, and I'm actually going to repurpose this background. So I'm going to copy, select those layers, delete them and then paste them, right? And this thumbnail here, I'm gonna cut and put on an upper layer, like so. Size it to where it would be in normally. And then I'm gonna use my camera tool and zoom in. I'm going to set a keyframe for the camera first, though. So eventually I will want it to go back out to full size. Okay. Or something. We'll see. So this would be that, that zoomed in frame here. If you look at it in the camera view. We're going to see this. Right? I'm going to duplicate that. But I don't need these keyframes. So I'm going to get rid of those. And put this camera move over here. And cut right there. All right. So just to adjust this one frame so he's right in the center, we'll get that nice Wes Anderson style framing. If, if we have an audience member that's, um, you know, feeling overwhelmed right now watching you um, because you are a pro, what would you suggest, um, you know, starting off with if you if you want to 
if you want to start storyboarding? I think it's important just to start off with a story that you want to tell. Like, do you have a, what's your, what's your reason for being a storyboard artist? Like, is it just to make money? That's a poor reason. <laughs> like, think about, think about why you would want to do this. You know, it's, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. So if you're, if you're thinking that you want to go into storyboarding because you think that's an easy job, no, it's not. You gotta, you gotta really know your stuff. You know, um, mm -hmm. if you're thinking that, like, I just have this story to tell that's that's burning in my soul that needs to come out. That's a good reason. And then if you, and then if you get money, then it's it's. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can you can seek you can seek that as a living. Don't get don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like if, if money is the only reason you're getting into it, then you're not going to put the time and effort into your, into your art and your craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes a lot of heart, right? So it, it does. It takes a lot of heart and it takes a lot of you, you know, a, a lot mm -hmm. of people put a lot of their self into these storyboards into, you know, from their life experience. Mm -hmm. So, and, and often, you know, some of the funniest stuff comes from just like, yeah, you know, I was on vacation this one time and then this crazy person came up to me and like said something and then this happened and, and that ends up being in the board sometimes, yeah. you know, especially if you're working on a show where the writing isn't like absolute law, you mm -hmm. know, you have a little bit of leeway to do something creative and, and, you know, instinctively a lot of people draw on their own experience and that's mm -hmm. better than like drawing on an experience like, Oh, I watched this movie one time and there was a cool scene that this guy did this, you know, mm -hmm. um, or, or this, this girl said this cool line that I want to copy or whatever, you yeah. know, does it happen about, often? Or, sorry, continue. What? I was going to say, does it happen often that you get a bit of leeway when you're doing your storyboards to... It depends on the production. Depends. It always depends on the production. Okay, so that's not going not gonna to work as well right there because it's totally different sizes. Now that I look at it. Oh. <laughs> I can give him something a bit more um, like wide gaping mouth. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Vector drawing is awesome. <laughs> so much leeway you have. <gasps> the dawn. And then uh, let's go back to our, to our stage. Then, uh, not to get like too Hotel Transylvania ish, but like, have him just sort of like sink down in his chair. I think he would grab his little intercom. And be like, can I have flight attendant Doris come in? Aging flight attendant Doris, get in here now. String strings down in his chair. And that's when we would have that camera move. <laughs> so Doris is our zombie character. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Should be our 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 mummy. So this is your last chance to ask any questions um, to Mike about Animation Dance Party or um, storyboarding. Ask away, people, if you have if you have something you want to know. 
anything. <laughs> not anything. It has to be related to storyboarding in some way. Let's not get personal. Yes. What was your biggest childhood trauma? <laughs> we only have five minutes, Mike. Not enough time. <laughs> this isn't a therapy session. This is. <laughs> Let it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I have like this uh, kind of. You know, they had those, like, military-esque looking hats back then. <sighs> so we do want to see that hand. So maybe it's just, like, one of those limp wrist sort of things like uh, Mike we have a question um, do you also use Harmony yes although I am not as proficient in, at Harmony as I am in this program but uh, I largely use the hand drawn tools um, and uh, I'm learning a little bit about rigging in the node view uh, it's just taking time to sit down and, and work on it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and working on learning it because um, it, it is a valuable, a valuable skill to, to have. And I think a little bit of animation experience when you're working on boards is going to make it so much better down the pipeline because you'll know a little bit about um, how to set things up to make animation really work well. Yeah, to help your fellow colleagues you know, in the right direction or. Right. But just, just to sort of to know the capability and know like what's going to be better to actually be able to execute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also if any of you budding designers get on here and feel like you want to do some uh, characters, for collaboratory, we'll definitely like show those on stream. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to do them before the next collaboratory and post, just do uh, hashtag Tomb Boom animation or hashtag Tomb Boom hashtag collaboratory on your social media platform of choice. Yes. Oh, we have one more question. Um, so thank you for today's stream. Uh, how do you plan out panel timing? I noticed you started with one panel, then keyframed it. Um, it's something you just kind of get a knack for over time. Um, I think that it's, um, I mean, there's some people that have sort of an innate stage or an innate sense of timing. Uh, I know a couple of animators that, that are like that. There's like, oh yeah, that's, that's two frames. That's three frames. You know, like they don't even think twice about it. Um, but I think that's something you just learn and feel over time. But what do you say we play this and then we'll wrap up for today, huh? Yes. Part one of, um, oh, we need a title. We need a good title. It's a good title. Because uh... <laughs> we need to start doing title pages. Okay, we need a title, people. Dead air. There, okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I, I, think, yeah, no, I think that works as well with the skull. I think it just. Death Air Part One. <laughs> Dead Air. Maybe a, a, a creepier looking font or something with dripping. Oh. Ooh, ectoplasm or some nonsense like that. There we go. All right, so we have bird dead air. This is your captain speaking. We are approaching our destination. 
tables and chairs in upright position as we are going to land shortly. It is 4 a.m. 4 a.m. And he wipes it off really fast. And this is probably a lot shorter duration. <gasps> the dawn. Uh, uh, flight attendant Doris, please see the captain right now. <laughs> uh, she comes in. So um, I think we need a more feminine growl. Can you do one, uh, Julia? Like a flight attendant growl? Right now. Grr. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not good with my sound effects like you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't even trying though. And this okay. is recorded. <laughs> and this is recorded. So that your your lack of effort is gonna be for there there for all the world to see. You won't see me next collaboratory. <laughs> <laughs> Julie fired. I'm sorry. It's just not working out. No, um <laughs> Okay, well, cool. I'm I'm this is this is gonna shape up to be a fun little board. Yes, thank you for joining us, everyone. And uh, we'll see you October 19th for our part two. Yeah. And if you're in Pasadena, maybe we'll see you at Lightbox, huh? Oh, yes. Come pass by our booth. We'll be there. Um, so booth 809. Come say hi. <laughs>